Hi guys, in, in this video I'm going to talk about photo contests and uh, especially regarding to uh, travel photography, but you can apply this uh, uh, to any, any other uh, gene of photography. Um, it's basically just about what you can and what you can do. In a contest there are rules, so if you follow those rules, you should be fine. Or what? Whenever someone does well, there will be critics. Someone that will find reason to challenge his success. Sometimes rightfully, sometimes just out of spite. So what is travel photography? Well, it's nothing simple. But it's not complicated either. It's basically everything. Everything when you are traveling and what you see and what you want to relay to your viewer that could be considered travel photography. Some people will say it's about inspiring others to visit a location. Others will mean that their photography has more depth and meaning and uh, it's about culture, architecture, stories of people, stories of local people. I agree with both. It's everything, you know, it's, uh, there's no reason to, to limit yourself too much. It's all about the purpose. What, what, what is your purpose doing this? What's your message? What are you trying to do or tell with your travel photography? And then we have methods on how we get our shots. Sadly, some people act like they're visiting the zoo, selflessly snapping away with no regards to people's privacy or feelings. They have no morals, no empathy towards others. All that matters is to get the shot, even if it means belittling or dis disrespecting other people. Can you do this respectfully? Of course. Go talk to the people, go uh, ask them, approach them. Um, some people will say yes, others will say no, but not making them a part of this decision process is just wrong. Especially if it's going to be like a main character in your shot. And very often you don't even need to talk to them. Uh, a simple gesture is enough. They see what you're doing. They see you're interested in them. It's very easy to give a smile, get an approval without a word. If they do not approve, you, you, there's no doubt. They, they will give very clear signals about that. So when can you photograph people without their permission? Well, it comes down to common sense. What kind of a person are you and what are you going to use these photos for? People are not just put down here on this planet for your amusement. In some places you actually can be expected to be photographed. Markets, in some events. Just, just in any case, make your presence known and it's all good. Photographing people in their natural environment without them putting on an act for the camera is a wonderful thing. With that, you are giving your viewer a glimpse into the life of others, into different culture, just a different reality. But for example, what if you ask a farmer to uh, milk his cow or something? for you while you shoot. Something he does every day, but in this case he's doing it for you. Or if, if you see a woman, a mother with her children and they look photogenic and they, you ask them to sit down so you can shoot, take a few photos of them for money or, or not. With this approach, you are essentially staging a photo. They're, they're doing something they do every day. 
but by asking them to do it, you are staging a photo. The reason why I decided to do this video now was this article on Petapixel. The winning photo of the $120,000 HIPA prize was apparently staged. So that's the photo and here are the uh, participant, workshop particip participants shooting this uh, mother with her child. First of all, I don't participate in photo contests, therefore I, have, I had never heard of this contest before. But the uh, 120k prize caught my attention and also the public outrage that uh, this photo got because it was being staged, the winning photo was being staged. I saw comments from people who consider them real photographers saying that staging, staging photos is uh, exploitative, cheating and does not represent life. Real life, it's fake. In this case, the winner of this competition followed the rules of the contest. So to me, this just sounds like bitter people losing to someone who they claim take the easy way out, doesn't put in the work, they're not real photographers. And winning, not only with a stage photo, but a whole group got more or less the same thing. I heard the winner of this contest, he was talking about it somewhere that uh, this photo was actually not staged. But then we have this evidence of the photos being staged. Well, you know, it sucks, it's dishonest. Uh, however, it, regarding to the contest, it's, it's not an issue. The rule says it's okay, so he just won this contest, fair and square, states or not. So let me break down what I've been talking about in, in six steps. First, it's not cheating if the photographer did not break the rules of the competition. It's just that simple. If you want a different rule set, just find another competition. How you feel about this is just completely unrelevant. Two, in this case, and in many other cases, when you have a photo workshop, where the photo guide sets up a scene and uh, then we teach the whole group how to approach this, how to shoot it, a lot of people will have very similar photos. To give everybody in the group a chance to set up a shoot individually, it will just take too long. For the photo guide does it, and if someone has requests, he tries to make that happen for them. But the whole shoot will be around 20 to 40 minutes, depending on the model. With uh, kids, it's uh, even shorter. And, but, but with this method, uh, people do learn a lot. And also, they will have amazing photos to show for their effort. And that's the whole purpose with a photo workshop, to learn and get great photos. Now, if someone decides to enter a photo contest using one of these photos and wins, well, that's wonderful. As a photo guide, few things make me happier than people from my tours being able to monetize uh, with their photos from the workshop or win contest. So it's, it, it, really, it really does not matter if other people have similar photos. Taking a winning photo on a photo workshop does not devalue your work in any way. Three, is this exploitative? People have their own opinions about travel photography in general. But to say a stage photo like that, like this mother with her children, is bad. But a candid shot of the same thing is good. Candid shot being that shooting the same mother without her knowledge, that's just hypocrisy. 
In this case, the woman probably got some money for her trouble. She was hired to do a job. Is that exploitative? What about if you hire a driver or someone to carry your stuff around or get you food? Giving money for the service, she was hired to do a job. That's not exploitative. But what if it's you? Somebody takes your photo from a dark corner without your knowledge of you and your children. And on top of that, that same guy will win a $120,000 prize in a photo competition, making this picture very public. Would you like that? What I think you would sue, but that's just me. But if somebody approaches you and asks you, either for money or not, could you be my model for this, this photo? That's a whole different thing. Four, it doesn't represent real life, it's fake. Just look at the photo. There is nothing fake about this. This is a mother holding her child. She has another child on her back. You can see this woman had a hard life. There is a story in this photo. There is nothing fake about this. This is a beautiful photo. Here's one of mine. It's a woman putting the kettle on in her humble kitchen in Myanmar. She does this many times a day, but in this case, I asked her to do this. And she did the exact same way as she always does. Does this not represent her real life? Is this somehow fake or is it cheating? No, of course not. Five, not putting in the work, just staging a photo. Therefore, not a real photographer and this is not a real photo. First of all, I have no problem with staging photos, as long as you're honest about it. And, well, if you're not a photojournalist or a documentary photo photographer, staging does not make you any less real. It's a method of telling a story, it's visual storytelling, and if nothing else, you do it to create beautiful photos. Second, you can't hold everyone up to the same standards. Some people are beginners. They have problem approaching people. They feel it's not ethical to do candidates. They lack the technical know-how to do this properly. There, there's a lot of reason, but, but they still want to get beautiful photos of people in their environment. So to do that, they sometimes take a photo workshop. There, they will get a variety of photos, some states, some not so states. In those cases, we get permissions to shoot people doing their thing. They know office, but uh, it's not a state photo. And of course, some street photography where people just walk around with their camera shooting uh, whatever they see interesting. Staging photos help people new to travel photography to get more comfortable with this type of photography. And after they will have an easier time finding their own shots. This is a wonderful way to enter this type of photography. It's a softer landing than just being dumped in the middle of Shanghai on your own with no experience and just start making cool stuff. Don't judge everyone based on your ability, where you are in this photography journey, where you feel comfortable. Not everyone is in this for the same reason. It's not everyone's purpose to get something new or unique or make a living doing this. They just want to learn, grow, travel in a safe environment and get amazing photos. And there is nothing wrong with that. And if somebody from that submits a photo to a competition and he wins, that's wonderful. 
If you consider yourself one of those real photographers who puts in the work, uh, I, I guess it sucks losing to an amateur from a photo workshop. All your real photos and high morals didn't mean anything. You just have to suck it up. There's, in this case, no rules were broken, so there's nothing wrong with this method. Just carry on. Do better next time. So what about photo contests in general? I don't do them uh, and, and because, I, I don't know, it feels like a scam. It's, uh, you know, it's like, a, it's not about photography. It's more about money. It's a business. And uh, the judges sometimes seem, you know, just either not qualified or just doing this, you know, they even sometimes, which is understandable. I mean, a photo contest gets, I don't know, 100,000 uh, entries, uh, at least the big ones, 200,000 maybe, I don't know. So they hire somebody to go through the bulk of it and uh, they are left with, with like 100 photos that w w which they will look at. So we just have to take it for granted that the other tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of pictures were worse than those hundred. And apparently there is a winning formula for at least some of those uh, contests. And, uh, and uh, people, you know, get good at playing the game, you know, and uh, for money, I guess. Also for prestige, there is, uh, so they can tell the world that uh, they won some, uh, some uh, contest that really nobody's ever heard of. Does that mean I personally will never do a photo contest? No, of course not. You don't have to like the game to play it. Just know that it is not necessarily the best photo that wins, because best is very subjective. And not connected to that at all, I have some bad news. It's pretty big. You should know about this because it's really important, but for some reason, the, uh, the mainstream media, they have not been covering this. Uh, mostly probably because they're one of the people that are pushing this. European Union just passed Article 11 and Article 13. And by that, killing the internet as we know it and putting us our same place at, as China re, regarding censorship online. I will not go into details. There are two links in the descriptions and they are very good. I, I, I urge you to watch this just if you don't know about it, just to see what is going on. But I do know that because of this article 13, I am in violation of copyright terms with this video because I'm showing a photo which is not mine. And even Petapixel could be violating those terms, those same terms, because they are showing it in their article. But I don't know about it, but that it could be. This is a commentary video. So uh, up until now, that has not been a problem to show other people's stuff to make a point. Uh, it's been fine. It's been considered fair use, but now that's gone. And those type of videos will probably go away if this is not fixed. Also, what will go away are, you know, memes on, on other social media, links to news even, that's not allowed, links to articles, links to everything. This is all gone. If you don't know about this, check out the links in the descriptions. It is a very important topic and we need people to, to give their opinion about this. So check it out. Other than that, uh, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. It is um, just my thoughts basically on competitions. I would love to hear your 
do you find photo contests to be a scam or a money-making scheme? Or do you feel like it's about photography or promoting photographers? What about this particular winning image of the mother with the kids? It states, do you think that's bad? It will be interesting to hear your opinion about it. Thank you for watching. Bye.